right. I told you it was going to be a full day. It's not even noon yet. Um, I'm going to need somebody to uh, unlock this computer, please. Thank you. Um, so uh, we have uh, one more lightning talk um, while we're waiting for the computer to open up, uh, be unlocked. Um, I, that was a great example of uh, that these collaborations don't need to be formal structured projects, right? Uh, we can learn a lot from our colleagues just by being collegial. Um, and um, it turned out that being, you know, driving distance away from each other and being just similar enough to be interesting and just different enough to be interesting is, is enough to get a lot uh, from each other. So, um, uh, oh, that's, a, that's a great password. Okay. Um, so our, our, our last lightning talk before lunch uh, is uh, from Yana Vovides. Yana, are you? Okay. Uh, so, um, so I, as I said in the beginning of the day, um, there are uh, many ways to be an empirical educator. All paths, all roads lead to Jerusalem. Um, and I had the, um, the good fortune uh, and the honor uh, earlier this year to uh, uh, guest lecture a couple of classes with the great Randy Bass at Georgetown um, in the program that Yana is going to be uh, speaking about. Um, Georgetown um, uh, is a different university than Carnegie Mellon. They have their own uh, way of doing empirical education. And so we're going to hear a little bit about their program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I know I'm standing between, um, you know, I'm here and then lunch is out there and I'm pretty sure it's set up already. So I will go ahead and, and um, share a little bit about our learning design and technology program. So my name is Yana Vovidis and I am Director for Learning Design and Research at the Center for New Designs in Learning and Scholarship, which is our Center for Teaching at Georgetown. I'm also faculty in the Learning Design and Technology program. My background is instructional design and technology, uh, way back when computer-based instruction just started out, um, uh, so from the University of Iowa, so Midwest, go Hawkeyes. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically share a three-minute video because I wanted everyone here to get um, the vision. Why, is, why did we even start a learning design and technology program at Georgetown? And then I'm going to dive into a, a curriculum mapping that I hope will be something we can talk about later on as well during lunch because I'm thinking of it as an empirical curriculum, something that can be used for research, something that can be used for, with students as applied innovation, and something that can be used with faculty when designing online courses especially. So I'm gonna hopefully play the video and hopefully it will play and work. Higher education's at an inflection point. Online learning, new technologies, big data, uh, innovation, disruption, these are all challenging some of our assumptions about how teaching and learning happens in higher education. I really deeply believe that our society needs something from higher education that it's not getting. We have universities that have been around for one, 200 years. At the same time, some of the practices we have in higher education have also been around for 100 and 200 years. There's so many things that are changing in the world at large, technology, communications, and so higher education has to become more flexible and more adaptive. It doesn't have to be at a very macro level. It can be an individual faculty member really adopting a new approach in their teaching or thinking about how the students can learn in a different way. What we need to be doing is teaching students how to be lifelong learners, how to be interpreters and translators of knowledge. Technology 
globalization and all of the other factors that we're so much aware of and involved in now mean that education has to innovate. But just innovating means novelty. Novelty for the sake of novelty doesn't help anybody. What matters is that there be a design to the innovation. What excites me about this program is that it puts together several really key dimensions that are necessary to reimagine higher education. Students in the program will get a strong foundation in four core areas. Learning design, technology and innovation, learning analytics, and higher ed leadership. Students will also have an opportunity of focusing or concentrating on any one of those areas or building a concentration that works for them in their future career goals. So that it's really the students aren't focusing on one discipline, they are creating a discipline. So students will graduate with a portfolio of actual work and to be able to demonstrate skills that they gained from the program. Everything we have in higher education, we as humans create it. Everything we have can be recreated. It can be reimagined. Students in this program um, are going to be engaged in, in doing work that uh, is not only meaningful in thinking about how students learn and how teachers teach, but really ultimately what it means for higher education to have an impact on, on the world around us. I think this is really a matter of urgency, maybe moral urgency, but there really isn't room to address the next evolution of changes that are necessary, operating solely the way we've always operated. So innovation plays a critical role in helping higher education take that next jump. To educate designers who are fully conscious of and committed to the responsibility that they bear as alumni of this program, not simply to be successful professionals, but to be educators who recognize the goal for which they're working, and that is respect for the dignity of each and every human being. So as you can see, we have a great media team at Georgetown. Um, we've been uh, doing lots of nukes since five years ago. So, um, so what I wanted to do, by the way, because I think we're um, getting podcasts, um, I'm going to say that this video is on ldt.georgetown.edu for those who are listening. And you can certainly go there and watch it over again. Um, so what I wanted to do is, as you can see, there's lots of grand ideas um, at times, and I think they're wonderful, but then we have a curriculum we have to um, think about, we have to connect to our students, and we have to, I believe, as our responsibility, make visible to our students as well. So. I've been looking at various different mapping tools to try to give me, uh, as a learning designer and someone who's really, who loves mapping, um, a way to not only create a spreadsheet, um, but a way where we can be thinking about all the connections across multiple layers of design components. So for example, the mappings don't need to be limited to the program goals, to competencies. They can be have an Uber rubric, like for example, integrative learning could be our Uber rubric. And all of these pieces could be connected so that when we run a report, we get a good sense of all the pieces, not simply one. So maybe you know other curriculum mapping tools that I would love to talk with you about, but this particular one is CourseTune, and we're piloting it this um, year at Georgetown. So how this works is basically we create a program. So I have several different programs, as you can see. I'm trying to use it also with our faculty. We're working with them on a Flex MBA program so that they're starting to visualize how their course is being um, designed and how they're designing it and contributing to that design. But also I'm trying to use it for our MOOCs and open learning environments as well. So for LDT, I'm sorry, let's cancel. We have a number of different courses. Did I go into the right one? Yes. 
And the way this works is that um, you create um, a learning analytics, let's say, course. So our program is 30 credits. We have four areas, learning analytics. So there's a core course for learning analytics. There is also a core course for methods of learning and design because learning design is another area that we're bringing together. And as you can see in the methods of learning and design, because I'm the faculty, there's a little bit more information in here than in the other one. Um, but the idea here is as you create your course design and your course structure, you're adding your learning objectives. You're also mapping them to program goals. You're also able to then add activities that align with each one of the objectives. So it really creates a robust environment of, of a course. The nice thing, it doesn't stay at the course level. It goes up to the program level and can go up to the institutional level. So we talked about assessment earlier and the ideas around assessment and, and program evaluation. And I believe a tool can, that allows that kind of flexibility could serve not only for, uh, you know, here is how it, the course outcomes work, but around program evaluation. So my interest as curriculum director for our learning design technology program is how over time can I adapt to the changes that are happening outside of, of the uh, program. Technology is not going to stop moving forward. Learning strategies, more research will give us better opportunities to identify better instructional strategies. So how can I create from the beginning, and I have the luxury, this program is only three years old, to create from the beginning an empirical curriculum that can continue um, learning as we learn. So the ideas here is there's also layers. So beyond simply having a course layer, I can look at the mapping. And I can have competencies here. I just chose to call it course goals, where you can then align your objectives there. And again, the nice thing about it is that you can have a number of different reports that you can simply run once your data, of course, is in there. So um, it's been an interesting experience because uh, a lot of the time when we try to do anything along this, this route, um, we tend to keep things to ourselves. Because this is a visually interesting environment, it's a nice way that a consultation with a faculty can happen and also a good tool for students to use as they're doing their courses. So a lot of what we're trying to do in the learning design and technology program is to focus on applied innovation and applied innovation um, in terms of the projects they're taking on. So real projects with a client. So I have one of my students working on a course that um, is um, actually part of the LDT program that he's hoping that he will be part of the LDT program, but right now he's working and mapping the curriculum of the course in this tool, but it's actually a course project. It's not a real course yet, but being able to have our students utilize the tools we're using makes it really a great experience. Um, again, talk to me later. I'm really excited about the possibilities for collaboration and research around it. Um, if people are doing MOOCs, I've also been uh, the lead in, in putting together our MOOC framework in terms of design. And it's, I tend to create layers and layers of design components. So if you're interested in how we could visualize the curriculum and make it part of a research uh, project, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Yana. And it's 11.58. Perfect. <laughs> OK, uh, for all of you here and all of you playing at home, um, you should um, Take your time, uh, go get something to eat. Um, you've all uh, had a, a full morning. It's time to digest. 
and I mean that in multiple ways. Go eat, meet, greet, and catch your breath. Thank you. <laughs>